testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 20, verse 21, King James Bible. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude this study titled The Fall of Babylon, Daniel chapter 5, verses 13 through 31. This is part two of two. You're like, Lord, why did you do that? Why didn't you just keep him away? I never would have known he had that check. We're all human, amen? Verses 18 and 19. O thou king, this is Daniel, the non-flattering prophet. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. Verse 19, and for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. Nebuchadnezzar was the man. He's kind of saying, you're not Belshazzar. Yeah. Uh, we're reminded of how great and vast the realm and rule of Nebuchadnezzar was. Now verse 20 says, But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in what? Pride. I'm just telling you over and over and over, pride ain't a good thing. Pride parades... Pride Month. Constantly hearing everybody say, take pride in yourself. And the suicide rate continues to climb. When are people going to wake up? That's not how you have joy in life. That's not how you have any level of real success in life. That's not how you get satisfaction out of life, taking pride in yourself. Because when you're all alone, you know you ain't all that. And so when you get, I mean, because you can walk around, some of these preachers and politicians and people, they walk around and they believe their press, you know, and they believe the way everybody treats them like they're a king and all that. Fella ran against the um, notorious Jeff Flake <clears throat> out in Arizona, the guy that Trump's been picking on, I think, last couple of weeks. And uh, for a while, man, he was like the, the hero of the conservatives out there in Arizona. But he lost. And uh, today or yesterday, killed himself. Why? Because that's not where happiness comes from. That's not where satisfaction comes from. You can be the darling of some party or, you know, Hollywood and all these entertainment, I tell you all the time, just watch this. They love to build you up so that they can tear you down. Bunch of dog-eat-dog -dog creeps. They did it like with Michael Jackson. Is, I didn't, I'm not a prophet. I don't claim to be one. But I, I told Jenny about a year or two before Michael Jackson died, I said, that guy's sick. And I, I'm not, I, he, he was sick in other ways, but I mean, he's physically, he was sick. And I said, he's going to die soon. And you watch all these people making fun of him and mocking him. I mean, before he, the, the months leading up to his death, they, they mocked and made fun of him ruthlessly. The day he died, suddenly he became a god. That, that's, that's the world, folks. That's who you want to impress. That's who you want to give you accolades. They can take a leap as far as I'm concerned. I don't care what they think of me. Dead or alive. But that's what people do. They waste their life trying to get that, that those accolades, the glory, fame. fame. It's like a drug. It says in verse 20, But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. See Daniel chapter 4. That's where we studied that. Uh, verse 21, And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. 
till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. And you say, well, why is Daniel repeating all this? Because he knew Belshazzar doesn't read his Bible. <laughs> That's why. Sometimes people say, well, you, you, you read a lot of Scripture, that, and that, well, I just, because I know a lot of people have never seen the text. You know, a lot of people don't read their Bibles. So you've got to cover it. So with that quick review of chapter 4, Daniel now lowers the boom. Verse 22, And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. He's been a fool. Proud, arrogant, foolish. Proverbs 14, 16 says, A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. And you want to see that? Turn on the television and uh, look at the KKK and the white supremacists and white uh, separatists, but also look at Antifa. Look at Black Lives Matter. Fools, all of them. And then look at the spineless politicians. You really, I thought I'd never say what I'm about to say. Nancy Pelosi has more spine than most Republicans. She came out today and called Antifa what they are, and you still got people like Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and all these hirelings up there that don't have the guts to speak the truth about Antifa. Gutless hirelings. Best politicians money can buy. Amen. But the fool rageth and is confident. I wish I, I got some video clips I could show you of that, but we'll move on. So now Daniel lays out the charges of the accused in uh, verse 23. Oh, there it is. But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. That ex explains most Americans today. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. This world can yap and talk all they want about how, oh, you Christians, you don't know God any more than anybody else. How do you, you think you're right and everybody else is wrong? How do you know? Blah, blah, blah. I know. Because I tested their gods before I became a Christian. I didn't want to be a Christian. <laughs> I had no desire to be a Christian. I enjoyed my sin. I mean, it caught up with me. And it was killing me. But at the time, I was having some fun. And Hebrew says there's pleasure in sin for a season. It'll kill you. It'll send you to hell. But there's pleasure for a season. And I started looking into the religions because I started out with Buddhism. Why? Just because I was stupid and I heard a bunch of people saying Buddhism was cool. And I thought, this is stupid. I was reading this stuff. I'm like, this is just... I, I've said things that make more sense when I was high. <laughs> Now I found out a lot of them are high when they write this stuff. And, and so then I got into uh, the New Age, you know, New Age crystals and all that stuff. And um, I saw a couple of things that kind of made me realize there was, it wasn't all foolishness as far as, it, there's some power there. It's dark. That's what I found out is there's some darkness there, but there's power there. Just enough, not enough to really make any big deal, but enough to kill you, enough to send you to hell. But that's all there is in that New Age stuff. And I saw those people, they were miserable. And so then I started, I started reading the Bible. And I started, of course I had the questions everybody had. Well, who did Cain marry? You know, thought I was really smart coming up with that one. <laughs> and somebody said, you know, they've been asking that question for about 6,000 years, don't you? Oh. Okay, I thought I <laughs> thought I came up with that myself, but uh, there are answers. We don't really have time for me to cover them all tonight, and I don't have every answer because there's always going to be new questions. But I kept asking and getting an answer, 
asking and getting an answer. Asking and getting an answer. And you start to just kind of run, run down, run down, run down. You're like, okay, there's got to be some questions there aren't any answers to. There's got to be some reasons why people reject this Bible. And then I found out that, lo and behold, Jesus Christ is right again. He says, this is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world. But men loved darkness rather than light. Was it because of their, so, their intellectual powers? Was it because they're just too smart to believe the Bible? No. Because their deeds were evil. And I found, I saw that with my own eyes, folks. Saw it with my own eyes. And then as I've read history, I've seen it repeated in history. I've re seen it repeated in biographies. Benjamin Franklin loved the man, loved reading the man. He loved darkness because his deeds were evil. Christopher Hitchens more recently, loved that guy. Hated to see him go to hell. You say, that's harsh. That's reality. That's why I like Christopher Hitchens because he would speak real. He would talk real. You know what he told somebody one day? He says, hey, if I'm wrong, I'm going to hell. That's why I like the guy. Just would have liked to have seen him get saved. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Now there's a nut. <laughs> if you'd ever read his stuff, man, he had to be on opium or something. <clears throat> but I kind of like the guy. But he's full of himself. So this is a type and shadow of judgment day for lost souls. This is the kind of thing that's going to happen when folks stand before the Lord in the last day. So the, my comment would just be, don't be a fool. Repent toward God with faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just do it. I think everybody, everyone in this room, everyone listening, everyone I ever talked to, I think they know deep in, down inside, they know. And I think they're going to admit that when they stand before the Lord one day. I know that's where I was before I got saved. I knew, but man, I didn't want to give up some of that stuff. Thank God, He just knocked me around long enough, I did. <laughs> Amen? Verses 24-25 says, Then was the part of the hand sent from Him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written, Mini, Mini, Tiko, Ufarsen. Um... Daniel immediately sentences Belshazzar for his sin. So he, he reads out the writing and then he reads the sentence given by God. And verse 26 says, This is the interpretation of the thing. Meaning, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Verse 27, Tico, thou art weighed in the balances and, found, and art found wanting. Perez, which is a form of the word Epharsin. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. That's simple. Mene means numbered. And that's why Daniel says, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tico means uh, weighed. Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez is divided. By the way, it's Peres, P-E-R-A-S, which is the word for Persia. So it's kind of a play on words there. The dividers are coming to divide you. And in response, I believe a pale, defeated, somber King Belshazzar does the following. This picture, this isn't a time of celebration. Out of a sense of duty, and I think he knew this was the last official act of his life. In verse 29. Read that with me. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And for Belshazzar, the execution of the sentence was almost immediate. Behind the scenes now, as we're reading this, in the previous days, Cyrus, generals, had taken the northern towns and diverted the Euphrates River. That's like uh, taking, uh, I joked about uh, CNN uh, today saying that their headline said, Trump leaves Texas, fails 
to uh, uh, return floodwaters to the Gulf. Because that's the kind of, you know. But that would be that, that's, that's kind of like what uh, Cyrus was able to pull off here. Diverting the Euphrates, lowering water levels, and allowing troops from the south to enter Babylon through the riverbeds, taking the city without much of a fight. So it would be like uh, troops north of Columbus up here in Lewis Center blocking uh, all the waterways and then uh, all the rivers then start to decrease to the point that then troops come in from uh, South Columbus and are able to come right up the Olentangy and the Scioto and, and sneak in. That's what happened there. And Daniel thir uh, 5.30 says, In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. So that was the end. Darius arrives with overwhelming force and a surprise attack uh, in his service to King Darius. This was on October the 12th, 539 B.C., if you want to mark your calendars. And on verse 31, it says, And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. I want to throw a few things at you here in closing. This Darius is not King Darius the first. And uh, we'll see in a minute, I'll show you an example. The liberals and the you know, skeptics will try to claim there's error in your Bible. They'll say that this Darius, that King Darius wasn't the person who did this. And the answer is, you're right, it's not King Darius. There were many people named Darius. And um, in the cuneiform text, this man was referred to as uh, Gubaru. He led the southern attack that I mentioned a moment ago on Babylon and was set up as governor of Babylon by Cyrus, just like Belshazzar was by Nabonidus. See? So Darius, get, uh, Guber, Guberu, call him Guber, uh, Guberu, <laughs> Darius Guberu, uh, we will... Uh, we'll have more to say on this, including more thorough historical and biblical documentation when we start the next chapter. But after the fall of Babylon, Darius is set up by King Cyrus as a king regent, just like Belshazzar. And uh, we'll see that again in our next study. But God gives the unbelieving, wicked heart just enough rope to hang himself with. I just want you to know that tonight. If you're here tonight and you, uh, you're listening tonight or you're listening whenever, you... You're looking for ways to soothe your conscience to get out of having to believe the Bible. They're there. They're there. It's called willful ignorance. Purposely not allowing yourself to see the truth so you can hold on to this crazy idea that you're... Uh, that, you know, it all comes down to it's either God or the Big Bang. That's it. There was nothing. And it exploded. That's your alternative theory to God. And there's plenty of people looking for excuses not to believe in God, reject this book, and to believe that nothing exploded and we're all here. This is an example of what I'm talking about. If you go out to WikiAnswers, Answers.com, and you see this all over the internet. Um, this guy, his name's uh, Dick Harfield. Someone asked the question about Darius, king of Persia, and king uh, Cyrus. Are they the same person? Because uh, we know the Bible says it'll be Cyrus, but we see in the verse 31, it's Darius the Median that took the kingdom. So are they the same person? Well, he gives the right answer and then the wrong answer. Are they the same person? No. From that point on, it's downhill. He says, Cyrus the Great was the Persian king who defeated the Babylonians. True and allowed the captive Jews and other ethnic groups to return to their homelands. True. Cambyses succeeded after the death of Cyrus. Then uh, Bardia or Smyrtus usurped the throne while Cambyses was the, in the provinces. Coincidentally, shortly before his death, Darius overthrew Bardia and ruled as king. Different Darius. See? And people go out there and read this stuff. And he says, the confusion between Cyrus and Darius arises because the book of Daniel, believed to have been written in the 2nd century B.C.E., eh, wrong. Wasn't written in the 2nd century B.C.E. But like I said, when you come to Daniel chapter 9, we'll see that there's a, an amazing prophecy 
that even if it was written in the second century BCE, the godless haven't done themselves any favor because that prophecy still comes true 200 years later. And it's amazing. Anyway, he continues and says, um, incorrectly attributed the defeat of the Babylonians and the freeing of the Jews to Darius. No, you are incorrect. You've got the wrong Darius. See? That's the problem. The Bible clearly shows that Cyrus and Darius are different. True. And shows that Cyrus was the one who released the Jews. True. But because of the opposition, years later, Darius, wrong Darius, had to search for the memorandum, blah, blah, blah. See how that worked? He's trying to convince you there's an error in your Bible. He's got an error in his head. That's the reality. What happens? I want you, as we're closing, watch this closely. If you don't get anything else tonight, I want you to get this. What happens when you rely on anonymous or unknown internet sources? Things like this happen. Health professionals report cases where people put sunscreen on their eyeballs to watch the eclipse. <laughs> because they were told on the internet they could do that. Not kidding. Some of these people they're saying may be blind for life because of that. It's kind of symbolic of what we were just talking about. You go on the internet to learn your theology, you'll be blind too. Amen? Amen. Who was it? Diana? It was you. Talking about these people believing a flat earth. If they tell you it's because of anything other than YouTube, you tell them I said they're a liar. These people buying into flat earth just watch YouTube. And then they try to act like they have some kind of a, you know, oh no, I've been up in an airplane and I didn't see the horizon. You didn't go up high enough. Well, if you go up that high, then you wouldn't be able to breathe. Good, then try it. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the real world, Daniel meets Cyrus. Josephus says that when Daniel met Cyrus, he presented the Isaiah scroll and showed him the prophecy where he was named by Isaiah who died 150 years before Cyrus was born. Think of that. The Bible, we know from the Bible that Daniel had to have met Cyrus. He's the number three ruler in Babylon, or he's head of the three under Cyrus and Darius. So he's had to have met Darius. And Josephus says when he did, he hands him Isaiah. He says, you're in the Bible. Do you know that? <laughs> Cyrus says, well, let me see that. No kidding. And he opens it up, and he said that he was duly impressed. <laughs> so let's close by looking at what Cyrus read about himself over in Isaiah 44. I know. When I didn't go a little long tonight. I actually started a little late, so I apologize for that. I know some of you are missing some TV or something, but Psalm 44. I'm sorry, Isaiah 44. That's how late it's getting. I'm going to read uh, 27, 28, and you catch up with me when you get there. Thus, that saith to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up the rivers. That saith of Cyrus. See? Right there it is. That saith of Cyrus. He is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. 150 years before Cyrus is even born, he names him and he says, Cyrus, you'll be the one to tell my people that they will rebuild the temple and Jerusalem before it had even been destroyed. And the Jews are reading this saying, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa. how's he going to rebuild it? It's right there. You crazy Christians. That Bible of yours. Pfft. Fairy tales. Sky monsters. Talking snakes. That's what you get. Same thing. Nothing's changed. Look at Isaiah 45. 
says, uh, we read this already, but I want to read it again. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, and I will loosen the loins of kings. There's that thing again. To open before him the two leaved gates. That's the leaved gates of Babylon. And the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Read verse 3 with me. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Yeah. See, that's what it's all about. He says, I'm going to name you 150 years before you're even born. I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to do. You're not going to know I said all this until after you've done it. Then I'm going to have somebody named Daniel show it to you. And then you are going to say, wow. Yeah. And if you have any sense at all, and I believe you do, then you're going to do the same. You're going to study this book, and you're going to see it for what it is, and you're going to say, wow. And because of that, you're going to know that when this Bible says you're saved, guess what? You're saved. When the Bible says you've got eternal life, guess what? You've got eternal life. The Bible says you're going to have a mansion and not a compartment. You're going to believe in mansions. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again. So you're going to believe He's coming again. Amen? Amen. It's that easy. If you or I or anybody else goes into the twilight of life or faces death, and we don't have confidence, it's because we didn't spend enough time in the book. And the time to try to do that isn't the, the, you know, after you're given the bad prognosis or when you're about to be run over by a Mack truck. The time to get ready is now. And have that confidence every day of your life until that last day comes. Amen? Amen. Let's have a real short Q&A because I went long tonight. But if you have an important good question you want to ask, go right ahead if you have any. Charlie. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, 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 we'll bring up some other things as we go into chapter 6, but one of the things is, uh, how many of you have heard of the Cylinder of Cyrus? You ever heard of that? You guys do not watch enough PBS. <laughs> but the Cylinder of Cyrus is this thing, it looks like a... Uh, huh? It's called the Cylinder of Cyrus. It's just a a thing that's about this wide and it's, it's, it's uh, written on this way but all the way around. So you just turn it and read it. And in that cylinder it's Cyrus bragging about what we read in the Bible. Problem is he's still giving Marduk the credit. Which is like I said, God still called him mine anointed. But it's interesting. We'll look at that in, in our Stay in chapter six. I'm going to, I have a picture of it, and then we'll. Uh, I got uh, some quotes from it. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Thank you.